I really love this new hammer. Look at this place, completely obliterated. One single ore left. Two single ores left. Three single ores left. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to New Horizons, where our goal today is to finish the Steam chapter and unlock LV. Currently, we have a few steam machines here powered by a solar boiler, which apparently is not enough to run two of these machines at once. We also did manage to get our healing axe last episode, I'm very very happy about this. It more or less completely removes the need for us to eat frequently. We got a handful of new farms over here which will come in useful later down the line. We should remember to keep our blast furnaces running, as always, steel is one of the main materials we need for LV. But steel is definitely not the only thing we need for today. In fact, I already started the material collection as you saw between episodes. I first went out to a magnetite vein. That allowed us to get plus one mining level on the hammer, and to that I added some redstone to give it some haste. Then I went to visit a little cassiterite sand vein for tin. And then finally we went to the limonite vein. And the results here I'm very very pleased with, look at this. This is going to help us out tremendously. We got some stuff cooking in the furnaces here. The furnace is not the most efficient way in terms of output. We can actually double it if we use the steam macerator, but the steam macerator is just way too slow to even consider using at this point. So for right now, we just smelt it directly one to one. And one bucket of this creosote oil can do half a stack of ore. It's really not such a bad deal, actually. Along with the iron and the gold, we also need copper and sulfur. And both of these materials we should be able to find here in the nether. Tetrahedrite, which is a form of copper, actually smelts into two copper ingots directly, so it's much more valuable than the overworld equivalent. And sulfur, which apparently is right here, is actually exclusive to the nether at this point in the game for us. If I remember right though, they do spawn much lower down. What on earth is that thing? I don't think I've ever seen those before. Yeah, it should be somewhere over here. We're still getting small sulfur. That should indicate what is below. And small copper. I don't think they're part of the same vein. They might just be close together. And Ceres quartz, that doesn't make any sense. These are three separate ore veins. Oh, interesting, we also get small silver here. Silver specifically, we're actually going to need today. Aha, we got Chalcopyrite. That's not the double yield vein. This is going to be more or less equivalent to the overworld variant. It is a form of copper though. I'm going to keep looking for more and we'll come back to this if we don't find the tetrahedrite. We do still have to find sulfur though. So our proper expedition into the nether began. Making sure to watch out for the lava, which is actually a big problem in the nether. And fairly quickly, actually, we came across our sulfur vein. Before mining, I made sure that the area was secure, since mining ores in the nether does upset the pigment. So that's something you have to consider when you're mining here, along with the consideration of the lava. But I think the increased yield does make up for it. Not only does tetrahedrite give us increased yield, but actually the banded iron gives increased yield. So if you can play around the troubles of the nether, it's actually well worth mining here rather than the overworld. But yeah, I started here with the sulfur vein. Sphalerite is one of the sporadic ores that's mixed in with sulfur, and I know from experience that we do need a lot of that once we hit LV. So once I thought we had enough sulfur, I just picked out the rest of the sphalerite that I could see. I dropped off the sulfur and the rest of the materials at our base, and went back into the nether to pick up copper. You know what? I actually stand corrected. The copper, the chalcopyrite that we can find in the nether does actually smelt into two ingots. I've mined out a decent chunk of this, not too much actually, but the fact that these pigmen are here are kind of making me a bit nervous. As soon as we mine any of these ores, they're going to go crazy. Does that mean it's time to leave? Should we? Do we have enough resources? Realistically, probably not, but you know, we'll come back later on and get what we need. When I was back at the base also, I did realise that we were kind of short tin. Even though I went to collect it earlier, I think I mined up asbestos and not tin. So I think I ended up mining the wrong material, so I'm, I'm going to correct that before we proceed. Okay, so this is about the point in the episode where we cut back to the base, we have all our resources, and we're ready to progress, right? We start to knock out a bunch of quests, get some progression, place some machines, you know, make more steam, upgrade our infrastructure, you get the idea, right? We're, we're progressing to LV. And that was my original plan, but this season of New Horizons, I don't want to fall into the same trap I fell into last season. In season one, our storage room looked something like this. Most of the materials have been moved out of here by now. And we built this way too far away from any machinery. And crucially, I built somewhere that I really didn't enjoy. And of course, this place never got finished. A lot of the machines have been moved, but this was our base up until we hit EV. And then we unlocked the void dimension and we built this. 
This is a bit of a sneak peek on where we're going this season, but it's going to be 10 times better. This is awful. Aesthetically, I mean. Functionally, I would do things differently, but the aesthetics is really what I'm getting at here. And I think it's important that we identify the reason as to why that happened so that we don't make the same mistake twice. So you've placed a bunch of machines, right? You've got your initial infrastructure. How exactly? Oh, wait a second. We have our spacesuit on it. Okay. <laughs> we don't actually have it. I think it's just from Changing Worlds. I was going to cut this out, by the way, but I think it's important that we show this because I feel like a lot of people, including myself, by the way, I don't have all the answers. I feel like this is where a lot of people kind of struggle. And honestly, it's one of the most difficult parts of expansion in modded Minecraft is like the early to mid game transition, even though this is definitely not mid game in GTNH, but you know, <laughs> this sort of point in any pack. How do you expand? Well, as I mentioned, our goal is to expand into this valley here. Our current dilemma is that we do have to pay attention to humidity levels, and the only place we can get 80% humidity, as you can see in the top left, is out here. Basically where the grass is this green colour, which is not very frequent around here. Certainly not on top of this valley. And that consideration only goes away once we hit HV, so about 100 hours of game time by now, and we can't really put off base expansion for 100 more hours. Yeah, this is going to take some thinking about, but I think it's uh, definitely worth addressing this as early as we possibly can. I'll see you again in a minute with the solution. Okay, first off, let me temper your expectations. This is still Greg Tech New Horizons. We, we are still in the Steam Age here. I guess this is also the second segment of Building with Threefold. And I've identified two more things which we want to keep in mind here. Point number one is height variation. And you see all this land up here in the valley? We're going to dig it all out. All of it. Not the mountains, the mountains will stay as is, but yeah, all of this, we're at like Y94, 90. Everything in the valley is going to be dug down to the level of our storage room, which is like something like 68. So we got to dig out like 20 blocks in this whole area. <laughs> you know, the more I'm saying this out loud, the more I'm realizing this is just crazy. So, you know, plans may be adjusted slightly, but that's the original idea. And the second tip I can give you guys is don't build yourself into a corner. That's something that's worked well for me in the past, and I'm going to continue to use it here. Five exits on this room may be a bit overkill. But yeah, try not to build yourself into a space where you cannot expand. I've made some adjustments to our machine room over here to try to get us through the Steam and LV chapters. And the plan, of course, is to go this way as we start the digging process of all of this. <laughs> oh my goodness, what have I got myself into? And of course, throughout all of the expansion process, we've kept up the chunk alignment. So everything here is all chunk aligned, including the stairs over here. And I do want to continue that as we head into the valley over here. I guess the last tip I can give you guys is try to plan the walkways, doors and pathways nice and early here. That's a really practical tip you can do right from the very beginning and it makes it more easy if you're chunk aligned. Since you can do the walkway in the center like we have here. Or you could do it on the edge of the chunk where the middle block is on the boundary. Anyways, I think it's time for a little less talk and a little more action. Hello chicken. <laughs> so along with the sulfur that we collected in the nether, we have to actually alloy smelt that together with raw rubber dust. How do we get raw rubber dust? Well, we have to extract rubber wood or sticky resin. I think sticky resin works. And all of that comes from cutting down rubber trees here. And sure, we just got a shiny new axe last episode, but I want to get a better one. One that's going to be able to cut the whole tree for us. Hello, spider. We are going to use a bit of an obscure strategy here and go for full nether rack. Durability of 600, which is completely terrible. That's awful. But that's exactly the reason why we've done it. So the way that the Tinker's tools work is the higher durability you have, the longer it takes to level the tool, and therefore the longer time it takes to get more modifiers. So because we went with nether rack here, it's, which is completely garbage, in theory we should be able to level the tool much faster. And since wood also doesn't have a minimum mining level, we don't have to worry about meeting that requirement. All we have to do is be able to chop the tree and have enough durability. And it's very easy to repair here, right? All we have to do is bring out some nether rack and it's back to full. And eventually, once we have enough modifiers on this, we can actually make it unbreakable so that we don't ever have to repair it here. And then once we do that, we can easily just swap out the tool parts as we saw with our pickaxe. So I think it's a very valid strategy to go for a nether rack. That's a, a, a fun little thing that worked for us last time and it's going to work for us here again. We've got a lot of rubber wood to chop. So yeah, I feel like we haven't really accomplished so much this episode actually. But basically what we have to do from here is grind out a bunch of materials, mainly rubber wood, and also wait on some machines processing, which actually could do with a bit of an upgrade here. So it's time for the grind to begin this episode. Let's do this.
you know what's funny? At least in all the time it's been for me, I didn't end up going back for that tin vein. <laughs> and we really, really could do with some more bronze right now. I think I've completely run through our supply. However, we might be able to get two birds with one stone here. Did I loot this before? I think I've been here. You can actually sometimes find the meals that we were crafting last episode in those things. But yeah, once we hit LV, we're going to need something called Mica. And Mica is going to enable us to get a blast furnace. Within the Mica vein, there also spawns Cassiterite sand, which can be smelted into tin. So we may actually be able to get two in one here if we're able to find a Mica vein. The only problem is it's one of the, in fact, I think it is the most rare overworld resource. So it actually might take us forever to find this, even with the Orefinder wand, which we do have configured for tin. You know what, honestly, I really don't have much hope for this. We will see though, we will see. Hey, at least now we can infinitely sprint with the healing axe, right? Hold on a second, we might have a winner. Small tin. If I'm right in saying, the tin vein is very, very low down, so we might be out of range of the Orefinder wand here. Which makes me think it's not Mica because Mica is slightly higher up. But I'll definitely just take a straight tin vein. Mica we can save for another day, that's future three's problem. Oh no, the pickaxe is broken. Please tell me I have repair materials here. Yes, always carry around ma repair materials. Oh, you know what? I didn't actually carry the backpacks though. The mining backpacks, I don't have those with me. Small lapis, that's not what we want to see. Oh, small silver. I've used all of our silver, <laughs> as you're going to see in a second, if we can find this tin. Uh, it wasn't there, but you know what? I, it, <laughs> it may have been worth a try, but I actually just realized that we have two tin veins right next to our base. This game, what is it doing to me? Yeah, one of them I know for sure is empty since that was the one I was at earlier. But I didn't realize there was a second one there. We're in a ditch. Oh, this is where we this is where we were in episode one to gather the first gravel. I didn't realize it was right here. Oh, potentially this might be a third one. This is Cassiterite Sand, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> this is actually the third one. It's kind of curious why the Orefinder one doesn't work. I thought it would have worked with the ingot. I guess maybe not. So before going mining, I decided to go back to base to drop our inventory and pick up the mining backpacks and then headed out to the Cassiterite sand vein. Alright, so all in all, I think we got around seven stacks of tin. Actually, wait a second, does this smell into two? Wow, okay, so that makes it 14 stacks. Okay, that's going to last for a while. Let's craft this into dust and we should be able to craft with copper for more bronze. Oh, I just realized there's 46 here, but we'll definitely need more than 46. So let's take a look at some of the upgrades I've made around this base. It might not look like much, like anything's changed actually. But uh, yeah, it took me quite a while to craft these three machines you can see above us. The high pressure solar boilers. No way. Did I count correctly? Do we have enough? Just enough? Oh my goodness, look at this. Aha, uh -huh, so I invested in this iron tank from Railcraft, which can hold 2,000 buckets of steam. This thing is 5x5x5. Five by five by five. So because we are relying on solar boilers, it means that we don't really have any power generation during the night time, right? So the best way I can think of to fix that problem is just to buffer the steam. And this will effectively act like a battery for us. So we can remove all of this under here and the solar boilers. I have a feeling this pipe, this bronze pipe here, is not going to have enough throughput. But that's okay, we can address that at a later stage, because I don't think we want to be using bronze for the pipe here. This pipe will effectively be our backbone of steam, which we will run to all of the steam machines, and then in future, the LV machines. Yeah, we have one large bronze pipe, which I guess we'll put right on the tank here. So as long as you put the gauge on the bottom, you can basically rely on gravity to pull the steam down and into the pipe. We definitely want to make sure we connect these... Oh, this is small bronze pipes. Uh, I think at least we want the regular size bronze pipes. Yeah, so the one gauge on the bottom will be for the steam output, and the one on the top will be for the steam input. And this is where we can put our solar boilers. Actually, we should make sure to do the water first, because if we don't have water in these boilers, they're going to explode. So maybe we can do something like this. Again, we want to make use of the shutter system on the pipes, so that all the water flows the same way and into the boilers. This will prevent it going backwards and reduce the inefficiencies within the pipe. Oops, not that way. We'll see if we need to add any more water tanks. I have a feeling it should be enough to support three of these things. All three should be filling up. It looks like it, go it prioritizes the first one, which makes sense. But we definitely want to make sure we have enough water to support all three of these regardless. And that seems to be the case. We'll wait for the buffer to fill and then check if these levels are still filling. Yeah, so now we just have to connect everything together and it should just work. We're going to need some more bronze for that though. Okay, it seems that we can get eight more, eight more pipes. Yeah, it's six bronze for every two, so it's three bronze per pipe. Actually, speaking of expensive, that tank up there was so much iron. 
Oh, the crafting table stole my wrench again. It's in here, right? Yes. Just to save on some material, actually we can get away with a small bronze pipe, at least here. Each of the boilers is 360 litres per second, and all the fluid tanks can carry half of their capacity per second. I think we just need to have a, a regular one in the middle, and this should start to fill the tank up here with steam. We should be able to see it. Yes, it is perfect. And yeah, crucially, is everything filling with water? The buffers here are full. Tank number one is climbing slowly on water. Tank number two is filling. Tank number three is also filling. Yeah, we, yeah, we are net positive on water here, which is a very good sign. I guess there's really not any reason why we shouldn't just plug in the regular solar boiler. I mean, it's going to be extra steam production, right? We'll swap this one out with a regular pipe also. So this is basically 1200 litres per second. Oh yeah, now we're starting to buffer. Awesome. So there's also the issue of calcification, which I mentioned in a previous episode actually. So over time, these things will eventually produce less. And the only way to fix that is just to break and replace the boilers. So occasionally we do have to come up here and perform some maintenance. But this is not a forever system. Eventually we can use much more efficient ways of generating power. I don't suspect this time we'll be using steam for quite as long as we did last time. I want to move into either benzene or diesel. To do that though, we do need to be at least an LV, which is our next goal here. So the first quest is to get some rubber. And again, we can do that by alloy smelting raw rubber dust with sulfur. I think it's 40 for the quest. This thing has been running for a little while. And also earlier in the episode, I crafted up all of these molds, which are just made by pouring steel over a casting mold. There is actually one which I forgot though. Do we have any more spare blank casts? We do. I also just realized here, this is very dark. That could have been extremely dangerous here. We should make sure to light all of this. So all of these molds we can use inside the alloy smeller, and in this case make plates from rubber bars. I think we only need 10 for the quest. Very good, very good. And at this point, actually, it's so weird seeing the space suit every time. At this point, we can actually pick up one of the things we wanted to get last episode. The piston boots, which may or may not be a quest. Quite good timing since the bronze boots were about to break anyway. We can pulverize for some bronze. I guess I guess we <laughs> I guess we can pulverize and recycle. But yeah, check this out. The piston boots gives us, I think, one and a half blocks of jump height. Or is it two blocks? Oh yeah, it's definitely more than two blocks. Look at that. Is it three blocks? Oh, we just discovered an ore vein here. <laughs> I guess there was a limeite in this chunk. Ah. And I believe they also can give us step assist. Yeah, look at that. So once again, I realized we were gonna be short some resources. Before we took on this final resource collection session of the episode, I made sure to keep the alloy smelter full of copper dust and redstone dust. This should start to process red alloy. I also went out to check the levels on the water tanks just to make sure everything was at a safe level. All of the tanks seemed to stay full, so once that was established, I went out in search of coal. As you guys know, we do want to keep the blast furnaces running as much as we can. Yeah, this hammer is awesome, I love it. And with a full mountain side of coal collected, it was back to the base for resource processing. I refilled the coke ovens, refilled the blast furnaces, and smelted the ores through the furnace. And then it was straight back out into resource collection mode, this time for redstone. I also didn't really feel like waiting on the macerator to process the redstone, so we lined it up vanilla style and... Oh my goodness, that is satisfying. <laughs> Let us see what we need to do to finish off this chapter here. So we got the rubber. The next quest here is for a bunch of wires. There should be a decent amount of red alloy already. No? Did I take this out already? Or... Okay, there's all the redstone. It's already processed. <laughs> it's not actually that fast. Uh, yeah. I took a little break in between there. Okay, there's the red alloy. There it is. We need some copper. We need some tin. And with our primitive technology, we do need to rely on the wire cutters to make wires. Oh, is it with plates? Is this not how we make wires? Yeah, it's with plates. I thought so. Well, in that case, we go into the forge hammer. I do want to be efficient with this red alloy, especially since right now the wire recipe is going to be super, super inefficient. Since not only do we only get one wire per craft, creating any sort of plate at this point in the game for us is 3 to 2 in the forge hammer. We can fix that, however, as soon as we get the wire mill when it becomes 1 ingot to 2 wire. So that's definitely something that we want to rush as soon as we possibly can. So if we look ahead at the quests a bit, the next one is for the vacuum tubes, which is eventually going to lead us into the first circuit. So a bit earlier in the episode, I made up some glass dust and put that through the alloy smelter together with the ball mold. And I think I did see them here earlier on. Yeah, we have over a stack of glass tubes. And it also seems by now the plating had finished in the forge hammer. Let's make up some tin wire. I guess we'll just do it all, right? Yeah, we'll do 40, 42 of each. The quest here also calls for fine wire. I think we're going to need to make up some more red alloy. 
and fine wire, at least before we have machines, has to be made from copper foil. And then two foil for two wire, I think, with the wire cutters. Yeah. Okay, is that everything for the quest? Uh, two more. We need to coat the wire. That's right. We can do that using the rubber sheets that we made. And actually, I have a feeling we're not going to have enough rubber here. I don't think I farmed enough rubber wood. I think I was a bit, uh... Oh no, there... Wait. I, I forgot about this here. Yeah, and I think we can do it in the alloy smelter directly. It's not any more or less efficient doing it that way. There's the quest. Awesome. Oh yeah, this really opens up the chapter here. So we're aiming for the steam turbine, which turns steam into electricity. But yeah, coming back to the vacuum tube quest, I think all we need now is some red alloy... Was it screws or bolts? It was bolts. Okay, <laughs> don't craft them all the way to screws. And the glass tubes we should already have, right? Which means we should be able to craft it. How many can we get? We can get eight to start with. I think it is a good idea to try to gauge how many we need. Okay, so it's two tubes per circuit, and we need at least two circuits for the turbine. And I really want to get at least a few LV machines today as well. Yeah, actually we can easily get more if we make up some more steel rods. That should give us enough for 12 vacuum tubes and our quest. All right, things are moving along here. M things are moving along. We need to make up some coal dust. Let's get that going through the macerator. We also need to grab some more of this redstone and wash it in the cauldron. Somehow I have an extra water bucket on me. I don't really know what that's doing there, but it comes in handy right now. Oh wait, can we get more vacuum tubes here? This was, I didn't realize I left this in the crafting station. Yeah, we can get an extra four. I guess I just didn't place the components evenly the first time. Okay, I think there's only like two components left to craft, maybe three. We are, we are getting there. This is a lot of manual crafting. Next one I want to tackle is the electric motor. And just because I know we'll need it, I'm going to throw some steel plates through the forge hammer, or steel ingots to make steel plates. I think a good rule of thumb when doing Greg Tech is to craft in multiples of eight. Not always possible, but I think generally it is a good idea. So let's aim for eight electric motors here. Okay, I collected a bit more material. I think we're only short some copper wire here. And this should be nine electric motors. Okay, next let's aim for the circuits here. The electronic circuits, we need resistors and circuit boards. Let's start with the circuit boards. We need wooden planks. And fortunately, we do actually have quite a lot of these. I did craft these way, way back in the Steam Age. Don't ask me what for. I think it was for bookshelves. We also need some more sticky resin. I don't think we have any more of that though. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut some trees here. I, <laughs> I really didn't want to have to do that. Hello, zombie. <laughs> you know, it's probably best just not to ask too many questions here. This right here should give you an idea as to what happened. Anyways, yeah, the rubber wood. I think we should have some bone meal here left over, which we can use. These trees do grow at a pretty fast rate here, but hopefully the bone meal works also. Yeah. Oh yeah, and combined with the lumber axe, this is going to be super quick. And it's a one bone meal situation here as well. Look at this. Yeah, it seems like they grow in a single piece of bone meal. That's awesome. You know, this kind of has me thinking, maybe it's not a bad idea to set up a little dispenser for bone meal. Since there's also instant leaf decay. I mean, it's still going to be a while before we can automatically farm trees. As usual, all of the rubber wood will go in the extractor. And we craft the sticky resin together with the wooden planks for the circuit boards. 33 should actually be a really good starting amount. But it's not quite as simple as that. We also have to coat it in copper wire. This is going to be so much copper. We're down to our last stack. I think there's some more in the furnaces somewhere, please. <laughs> yeah, another stack here, another s almost stack here. We should be able to make this work. And meanwhile, the coal dust should have finished in the macerator. There's another stack of copper, which we're going to turn into red alloy. Oh yeah, and one more thing I want to just interject with here in the video. Oh, I just realized these fence gates have been open the whole time. That could, that could have been dangerous. Yeah, I didn't mean that we were going to flatten all this out and then just have a big flat base down at the level of our storage room. I do want to have multiple levels going all the way down and really take advantage of that vertical space. At least that's the ambition anyway. I would also appreciate any suggestions at this early stage, actually. Any suggestions are absolutely welcome at this point. Oh, and you know what? I, <laughs> I just used all the sticky resin and we need it for resistors as well. I uh, probably shouldn't have used it all for the boards, but I mean, we're going to use it all eventually, right? This place is really, really not safe at all. I think we exit out the back here. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be this for a very, very long time. I remember doing this for like a week straight, just farming rubber wood. <laughs> I do want to find a way to optimize it this time around. But I'm going to try and make keep it as interesting as possible, even when there is moments all the same like this. All right, so I think this should be the final stretch. Let's get to LV. We can start with some more fine copper wire, which allows us to craft the resistors. Let's also finish coating the circuit boards. And we add in some steel casing, and this should be our first electronic circuits. We should be able to get four at least, right? The first of many. 
millions of circuits. <laughs> oh, that does feel pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. Very tedious, but we got- oh, we got some ice cream. Unfortunately, ice cream belongs in the bin, so yeah. <laughs> Actually, we should really eat that for the extra hearts. Oh, and again, this is a situation where I didn't put enough in the crafting grid. We can actually get five circuits here. Also, has this steel casing always been a part of the recipe? I don't remember that from last time. Maybe it's only used in the crafting table one, because once we get our circuit assembler, yeah, it's no longer used in this recipe here. Okay, let's stay focused on the prize here, though, and we need to craft some LV machine hulls. Made with all of our steel, this is the main steel sink for LV. I think it's with the wrench, let's make five. Once we have the casing though, we do need to turn it into the hull with some tin cable and wrought iron. This should be our machine hull, very good. And the quest? Yeah, and the final quest is to make some tin rotors. Quest calls for two. We are going to make four. Oh my goodness, the inventory is such a mess. Actually, we should follow our own advice here and craft eight. We can get eight, right? Yes, perfect. And now it seems that we already have the bronze fluid pipes, so we should be able to get our first steam turbine. Steamalicious. And of course, that also unlocks LV. Look at this, a huge rabbit hole here. <laughs> this is what we have to look forward to, but LV is a very, very fun chapter. And just so we can properly say we're in LV, let's craft up a wire mill, if we can. I think I should have accounted for all the resources here. One tin cable short, okay. We can manage that. Awesome, there we go, our first LV machine, the wire mill. So how are we gonna do this? We should really upgrade this pipe right here. And ideally, I want to put all the LV machines on this side. But you know what? We're going to figure out all of that and more next episode. We are finally in LV though. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting stuck in with all the machines here. But with that, thank you all for watching. Have an awesome day and I'll see you all in the next episode of Greg Tech New Horizons.